We humans are proud of our big brains. And so we should be. Since the time in our evolutionary history that we split from our closest cousins, chimpanzees, our brain has grown at least threefold. And along the way we picked up some handy tricks, like tool making, cooking, language and the ability to swipe on TikTok for three hours. Our brains are so big, they take up about one-fifth of all the energy in our body. But if we compare our brains to those of other animals, how big is our brain really? Let's take a look. It is probably no surprise that the biggest brains belong to the biggest creatures in the animal kingdom, whales. Particularly, sperm whales can have huge brains, weighing approximately 8 kilograms, or 18 pounds. That is almost 6 times heavier than the average human brain, which weighs about 1.4 kilograms, or 3 pounds. But, of course, whales are huge, and all the mass of their brain and body is supported quite well underwater. So how about on land? Who has the biggest brain there? Again, probably not very surprising, but the biggest living land animal, the African elephant, has the biggest brain. On average, the adult elephant's brain weighs more than three times as much as the brain of a human. However, if an animal is big, that does not always mean it has a big brain. The second largest living land animal, the rhino, easily weighs a ton, yet its brain is about 600 grams which is less than half of that of a human. Furthermore, the largest land animals that ever lived, like titanosaurs and argentinosaurs, had brains that were not larger than an orange. Nevertheless, there is a general tendency for bigger animals to have bigger brains. For example, we don't expect a hummingbird to have a football-sized brain. So maybe we should take that into account and rather look at the relative brain size. And with the relative brain size, we mean the size of an animal's brain in relation to its body size. For instance, if we scale down a 4-ton African elephant to the size of an average human, let's say 80 kilograms or 175 pounds, then the brain of that elephant would only weigh about 100 grams, which is about the size of a lemon. All the more surprising that an elephant's memory is so amazingly good. So in relation to body size, humans have a larger brain than elephants. However, when talking about relative brain size, we humans are not winning out either. When looking at an average house mouse, which weighs about 30 grams, it has a brain of about 0.5 grams. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when scaling up the mouse to human size, the mouse brain is strikingly similar sized to our human brain. Within the class of mammals, the ultimate winners would probably be tree shrews, because tree shrews have a relative brain size that is slightly larger than that of mice and humans. Certainly not winning out the battle of the largest brains are the giant anteaters. A giant anteater weighs about 50 kilograms, or 110 pounds, but their brain is usually not bigger than 70 grams. This observation is quite ironic since their favorite food, ants, fall on the complete opposite end of the brain size spectrum. The brains of ants are quite different to those of mammals. Since ants are invertebrates, they have no spinal cord, so their brain structure is hard to compare. However, when just considering relative size, ants are the absolute brain champions. Their brain takes up about 15% of their body mass. So if we scale up an ant to the size of a human, their brain would be more than 10 kilograms, or more than 22 pounds. Yikes, imagine having a huge melon as a brain. So taking together these observations, a pattern that emerges is that small animals seem to win out in this relative brain size battle. That is because larger animals tend to be disproportionately heavy. Being massive gives some animals a benefit in terms of survival. For example, adult African elephants are almost immune to any predators and have large fat storages to retain water and survive in difficult situations. So of course they are going to be very heavy. Therefore, when looking at brain size relative to body weight, they don't perform very well. 
This is why comparisons of brain size are often made using the so-called encephalization quotient. This encephalization quotient displays both body size and brain size on a logarithmic scale, rather than on a linear scale. By plotting these values of various species, we can get a best fitting regression line. Is a brain of a particular animal above that line? Then the brain of that animal is larger than you would expect if you compare it to all other animals. If the value falls below the line, the brain of that animal is smaller than you would expect when comparing it to all other animals. So this encephalization quotient takes into account relative brain size and disproportionate change in weight compared to size. Yet it still matters which species are put into this analysis. In general, encephalization quotients are larger for mammals and birds than they are for reptiles, amphibians and fish. Which is why encephalization quotients are often calculated separately for those different classes. So now that we know what the encephalization quotient is, which animals score well and which animals do not score very well in their respective classes. Within the class of reptiles, the absolute brain champions are iguanas and monitor lizards. Relatively low encephalization quotients are observed for various snake species, such as vipers and pythons, as well as for boa constrictors that are at the bottom of this list. However, despite their small brain size compared to other reptiles, it would be wrong to call snakes the dumbest reptiles, since experiments have shown that they have a great ability to learn, particularly when hungry. When their hunger is satisfied, they are difficult to be motivated for anything. Alright, so how about birds? The award of the smallest encephalization quotient goes to the ostrich. But also, chickens score at the lower end. The winners with the highest scores are parrots, closely followed by corvids like crows and ravens. Even when comparing them to mammals, these birds are very intelligent. In captivity, crows can be trained to use tools, a trick that in some occasions they even learn by themselves in the wild. And parrots can learn a whole bunch of tricks, often even without incentive, just because they can. So finally, let's have a look at the encephalization quotient of mammals. Excellent scores go to dolphins and whales. But also, scoring particularly high are primates. And within the primate family, apes have the highest scores. And as you may have guessed, within the ape family, humans have the highest scores. All in all, humans have the highest encephalization quotient of all mammals, and actually of all animals. So, in the end, we have to conclude that humans don't have the biggest brains. Nor do we have the biggest brains in relation to our body size. But we do have the biggest encephalization quotient. Now, does this relate to intelligence? Well, there is certainly a positive correlation between encephalization quotient and intelligence. But it would not be correct to say that an animal with a higher encephalization quotient is automatically smarter than another animal with a lower score. For that, intelligence is just too complex. And it cannot be represented by one or a few variables. In the end, encephalization quotient is an indication of intelligence, but it's not a direct measure. Anyway, that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, we would be very grateful if you could leave a like. It helps us to grow our channel and to get more recognition, meaning that we can produce more videos. Anyway, with that being said, we hope to see you the next time.